Hello, and thank you for watching this regional forecast update for the Corn Belt. I'm Andrew Pritchard, Senior Meteorologist with Nutrient Ag Solutions. I'm going to steal 90 seconds of your time just once again to remind you that we're going to be changing up how we deliver this regional forecast information to you here at Nutrient Ag Solutions and Agrable. The regional forecast videos for the Corn Belt, the West, the South, and the Northeast on Tuesday and Friday will be going away. Instead of the Tuesday and Friday regional content, five days a week on the regional forecast page, you go to the Nutrient Ag Solutions or Agrable customer or employee portal, click on weather story, you go to the map, you still click on the Corn Belt uh, region there where you would normally look for the video content. And instead at the top, you're gonna have a nowcast section where five days a week or more, uh, multiple times a day, I'll be sending out updates on the most impactful weather across that region and how it's gonna be impacting your operations. So I'm gonna free up a lot of bandwidth for myself mentally uh, and physically here. It takes a lot of time and there's only so much time in the day uh, to where I can just sit down first thing in the morning and look at, okay, what's going on in the Corn Belt? What do these folks need to know today? What has changed? And push that out to you. Below that, you'll have a set of static maps and animations that are going to be the same every day. You can look at what you want, the forecast radar animation, forecast precipitation over the next several days, recent precipitation information, past weather. It's all going to be right there specific to your region for you to check out five days a week whenever it is important to you, whenever it makes sense to you, whenever there is impactful weather in your region, instead of again, just having to wait for Tuesday or Friday to pump out a 10 to 12 minute video. This is gonna be able to allow me to really utilize my strengths and pass on more frequent, more uh, you know worthwhile updates to you. So that's gonna be changing. No more videos here on the other side of the holiday, uh, but if you go to the Nutrient Ag Solutions or the Agrable customer or employee portal, log in there, you're gonna find a wealth of information as Eric and I continue to work on this. So let's jump into the forecast then. I don't know if that was 90 seconds or not, probably not. I'll do my best to uh, get through the forecast here uh, rather speedy for you. We've got a couple of storm systems to talk about. One big one here over the next 48 to 72 hours. You can see it beginning to gather here in the midsection of the country. So we flip it over and look at the radar, pretty quiet. We do have some light snow showers making their way through North Dakota and Northern portions of Minnesota. Much of the precipitation associated with the incoming storm system, so uh, still lingering back across the northern Rockies portions of the Canadian Prairie this morning. Temperatures across the region, uh, pretty cold as you make your way for, uh, kind of along the, the mid-Mississippi and upper Mississippi river valleys. You're 17 in International Falls. You got teens all the way down into northwest Illinois, 20s and 30s surrounding that, and some 40s as you make your way into the high plains. So you look at the hazards map from the National Weather Service, it is becoming interesting across the northern uh, plains and the central plains here. High wind watches, wind warnings uh, in effect across the Dakotas, Nebraska, Kansas, parts of Colorado up through Wyoming and Montana. And then we've also got a winter storm watch across eastern portions of North Dakota, South Dakota, and then northern and uh, western portions of Minnesota, northern Wisconsin as well. Again, we're going to be expecting to see some snow accumulating here over the next 48 to 72 hours as this storm moves from west to east across the region. And so here's your surface map. Tuesday morning, that's today, Wednesday morning, and then we've got Thursday morning on the, the bottom center here. So as we head through the day today, snow across the US and Canadian border, chance for a rain snow mix across the Dakotas down into Nebraska. As we head into the day tomorrow, precipitation spreads east toward the Mississippi River. And then as we head into Wednesday, or I'm sorry, Thursday, storm system begins to move east of the area and precipitation should come to an end. Over the next seven days, this is what we're looking for as, as far as uh, total liquid precipitation goes. We've got snow across the, uh, the Canadian Prairie, a little bit of light snow here across parts of the upper Midwest, a little bit more possible here across parts of Minnesota and Wisconsin where we have that winter storm watch in effect. And then we'll be dumping some rain here across parts of the eastern Corn Belt in the Mid-South, maybe a little bit of snow here across parts of the eastern Corn Belt, but a chunk of this precipitation doesn't come until next week. I think this is going to be a rather disappointing storm system in parts of Illinois and Indiana as far as the uh, storm over the next 24 to 48 hours. Total snow between now and Friday evening. So who's going to get fresh snow before Christmas Day? I know folks are wondering. Again, a good chance for a, a new coating here to, to several inches, up to six inches across parts of Minnesota and Wisconsin, the UP of Michigan, elsewhere across the Dakotas, down into parts of uh, central Nebraska, northwest Iowa. That's what we're talking about. More like a coating to maybe an inch or two. And then same thing over here across parts of the eastern Corn Belt. As you get into far eastern Ohio, you got a better chance of getting a couple of inches here uh, stacking up as we get into uh, Wednesday night into Thursday morning. But uh, across uh, Indiana, 
across to Illinois. I think we're talking about maybe some snowflakes on the back side here as we head into Wednesday night. Not likely looking at anything in the way of accumulation. And then as we look at western Michigan, uh, we'll get some enhancement coming off the lake there, maybe a couple of inches of snow there. So that's about it between now and, uh, again, Christmas Day. So who's going to be enjoying a cold brown Christmas? Pretty much everyone in this corridor here. Again, this is all part of a very active storm track from the North Pacific through the Gulf of Alaska into the Pacific Northwest and then swinging down in through the central United States. As we hit play on this animation of 500 millibar heights and anomalies, you can see the storm system midweek swing right into the central US. That's what sets us up with stormy conditions, very windy conditions across the midsection of the US as we head through midweek. This trough pivots off across the northeast as we get into Friday and Saturday. Ridging on the backside, that's going to allow us to warm up quickly on the backside of an Arctic blast here as we get into Wednesday night, Thursday, and Friday. Uh, Christmas Eve, Christmas Day, going to be some of the coldest days of the season so far across a big swath of the Corn Belt, but we moderate quickly, bring 30s and 40s right back in. But the parade of storm systems continues. We have another one here that sneaks in as we get into the back half of the weekend. And then a third one that comes sneaking in here, uh, not really sneaking by any stretch of the imagination, but lumbering on into the midsection of the country somewhere around New Year's, uh, New Year's Eve. So what does this all look like? Well, here's the high resolution NAM model. So quickly get us in into uh, the Wednesday night and Thursday time frame. You can watch that storm system quickly scoot across the region again. Uh, it's going to be windy. We're going to see a big change in our temperatures, but precipitation across the eastern portions of the Corn Belt could be pretty disappointing, I think. So here's what we've got Thursday morning. Again, much of the precipitation still located across the Canadian Prairie and the northern Rockies. The storm system begins to emerge across the region Tuesday evening. We'll have the area of low pressure across the North and South Dakota border, pushing into Western Minnesota as we get into the late overnight. Snow begins to spread down into portions of the Dakotas and Nebraska as we head through the overnight hours tonight. And then tomorrow morning, rain begins to develop out in advance of the cold front across portions of Wisconsin, Iowa, Illinois, and Missouri down into the Ozarks. So this is the picture sunrise Wednesday morning. We'll take it into midday on Wednesday. This will be noon, so lunchtime on Wednesday. The cold front right around here. Cold winds blasting in out of the northwest on the backside here. Out in advance, we're still going to be quite warm. It's going to feel a little bit like spring tomorrow morning across parts of Illinois, Indiana, and Ohio down in the mid-south. A warm south wind. Uh, with rainy conditions moving on in. That cold front blasts in from west to east as we head through Wednesday afternoon and Wednesday evening, making its way all the way across the Corn Belt as we get into Thursday morning. So the sun comes up on Thursday morning, the cold front now making its way out of uh, eastern portions of Ohio, Kentucky, and Tennessee. We do get some of that precipitation to change over to snow across parts of Indiana. I think it'll be disappointing in Indiana, maybe a trace to an inch or so. Uh, and then as we get into parts of Ohio, that's where I think we've got a better chance of getting a coating to a few inches of snow here as you make your way from west to east across the state of Ohio. A little bit of snow accumulation possible in western portions of Kentucky. I'm sorry, eastern portions of Kentucky and Tennessee as we get into Thursday morning as well. High pressure on the backside. It is going to be cold. It is going to be windy, but it will be dry for the Thursday and Friday holiday. So here we go, let's look at the European model. This will take us a little bit longer range. We'll watch the first system again, rather dry, rather disappointing as it makes its way across uh, the, the area here Wednesday. Very strong winds. You see the tightly packed isobars circulating uh, around the storm system. So out of the south in advance of it, a warm south wind Tuesday night into Wednesday. And then as we get on the backside of this cold wind coming out of the northwest. So here's what it looks like mi uh, midday Wednesday. And then Wednesday evening, watching that rain spread across the eastern Corn Belt into parts of Kentucky and Tennessee, changing over to light snow across uh, Ohio into eastern Kentucky and Tennessee as we head into the day on Thursday. High pressure on the backside. Uh, the, the only snow you'll be able to find here on Christmas Day is going to be some flurries coming across parts of Michigan and Ohio. Otherwise, just cold and quiet across the rest of the Corn Belt for uh, Christmas Eve and Christmas Day. It'll be quiet as we head through the weekend as well. A bit of a lull on the backside. We'll get our next storm system ejecting right here as we get into Sunday and Monday. It's going to be rather dry across Kansas and Oklahoma. Gets its precipitation going here as we swing into the eastern Corn Belt. We'll obviously have to watch for adjustments with the track of the storm system. I know we're right now the European is suggesting a little bit of snow across parts of the eastern Corn Belt here, even Missouri, into a northern Illinois, northern Indiana. Uh, but a north or a southward track shift, of course, will make a big difference there. And we'll have to watch, you know, how much precipitation we're actually going to get with this as things come together with that storm system. 
The third in the line comes swinging in here right around New Year's, uh, New Year's Eve, December 30th or 31st. So good confidence on this first storm system as we go through Thursday. Uh, and then we've got some time to watch this Sunday, Monday, and then this uh, Wednesday, Thursday of next week storm system. Now we're talking about high winds. We're looking at uh, maximum wind gusts with the passage of this first storm system. And again, across parts of the high plains, uh, we're talking about winds that are gonna be gusting anywhere from 50 to 70 miles per hour as this storm system moves across the region late tonight into Wednesday and then Thursday. And then same thing here across parts of the Eastern Corn Belt. Those strong winds gonna be gusting anywhere from 40 to 60 miles per hour uh, as we head through Wednesday into Thursday. Temperature trends, again, we're gonna get a shot of cold air here. I'm gonna pause this, but then show you that uh, as that cold air moves in just as quickly as it does so, uh, Tuesday into Wednesday, or I'm sorry, uh, Thursday into Friday, uh, we quickly moderate here Saturday into Sunday. Likely with those next systems that come in next week that we'll see additional cold air being pulled into parts of the Corn Belt. So we do moderate over the weekend, but I would be uh, ready for additional cold air to make its way in as we get into next week. So we'll wrap it up here. We'll look at the precipitation forecast from the ensembles. Again, uh, total precip on the right. You can really see the region that is favored with this storm track. Storms coming in from the Pacific Northwest and then kind of uh, re-intensifying, reorganizing across the eastern third of the country. So Kentucky and Tennessee, Ohio, Indiana, uh, you got the best chance here to stack up some precipitation as we finish up the month of December. Uh, Missouri and Illinois, you're kind of on the periphery there. We'll have to watch the, the shift of the tracks here. And then on the right, we've got the probability of picking up an inch or more of snowfall through December 30th as well. And again, you can see it's certainly not a slam dunk, but as some of these systems start to work their way up uh, through this region, it is certainly possible as we get into next week that we could uh, end up with a swath or two of some snow from the Texas Panhandle in the portions of Illinois that really have uh, lacked their snow, or at least I should say, this area has seen some snow over the last couple of weeks, but parts of Iowa, Missouri, and Illinois, it really has been a, a relatively quiet winter season so far, as far as significant accumulating snow goes. Here are your highs then for the next five days. We've got some changes on the way. The highs today, quite warm for this time of year, 50s and 60s in the midsection of the country. Big change as we get into tomorrow. Those same regions will be in the 20s and 30s. But look at that, already warming up on the backside quickly as we get into Thursday. Uh, meanwhile, parts of the upper Midwest into the Eastern Corn Belt will feel some of the coldest air of the season Thursday into Friday. Highs only in the teens and the 20s, warming back up slowly as we head into the weekend.